are plenty of alternatives being built everywhere. Of course, we don't have one hegemonic alternative to replace the capitalist system, but we have a lot of diverse local systems that are respectful, are culturally appropriated, and are autonomous and emancipatory systems. We believe there are alternatives. And we believe that the alternatives are there, which are not being looked into. The problem in most African countries is the fact that land is being taken out of food production to produce fuels for cars. And this is a result of um, the EU mandates. And again also, the rush of uh, rich nations, especially the EU, the US, coming in to buy lands to grow, to grow food crops, not for domestic consumption, but for exports, is also a major problem. The EU were looking into Africa. They're looking into buying farm lands. Africa became a speculative paradise where, yes, they're going to, yes, it's going to be like their experimental, experimentation field. And they do not correspond to the necessity of peoples. They correspond to the necessity of markets, whatever those uh, abstract entities are. So one very basic would be uh, European Union be restrained to its own territorial extension, the sense of its agriculture policy and renewable energy policy, because otherwise it's uh, it's a new, uh, it's a more sophisticated, but it, it is still a new form of coloni colonial land acquisition and demand. We need to rethink the whole policies and the whole food system so that food will we start thinking food in terms of people, not in terms of commodity or derivatives. Food in terms that will sustain the environment, not sustain some business interest. We have the understanding that a food sovereignty is based on local, diverse, autosufficient agricultural systems. And so it's essentially for the sense of, of a structural change in this economy right now that we will address truly the proposal of food sovereignty and the proposal of relocalize and shorten the circuits of agro-food uh, uh, trade in the world. Wherever privatization has been tried, what has happened is a public good became a private good. Now that is an ideological position. But if you see in practical terms, it became expensive. So the commodity of water, which was reasonably available and at a price to common people, and even there you have problems. But when you get privatized, the prices increased exponentially. Each individual has a right to water, and that cannot be given. It is a right that is there. When communities looked at these water bodies, they looked after them. It's not only the communities were using the water bodies, they were also maintaining it. Now that all fell into disuse because the government said it belongs to us. And then the government did a bad job and says, okay, the government can't do it, give it to the private sector. But the community did a damn good job. So what we believe is, that decentralized processes involving the community are the best solutions for these common goods. Actualmente son empresas coreanas o empresas japonesas o de Unión Europea que llegan y se instalan en terrenos comunales, agotan el agua, contaminan ¿no? el medio ambiente y les dejan toda la factura de destrucción a las poblaciones locales, le dejan un pago al Estado y se van. ¿no? Por ejemplo, en Colombia las zonas mineras están ubicadas en los territorios indígenas y desarrollar y sacar esos productos, esas materias primas de nuestro país, implica desplazar a las comunidades, generar desplazamientos eh, forzados. 
la Unión Europea predica de unos principios ambientales, por ejemplo, de unos principios laborales o de unos estándares internacionales que aplican en Europa, pero que no aplican en países del sur. Es decir, hay un doble estándar en la forma como se manejan eh, las inversiones, como se manejan los, los negocios y las relaciones comerciales con nuestros países. Entonces es necesario hacer un esfuerzo por ver de qué manera el, el aprovechamiento de estas materias se traduce también en beneficios concretos para las poblaciones y evita la destrucción del único espacio que estas poblaciones tienen para vivir. Es decir, que si se van a hacer grandes obras de infraestructura o si van a hacer explotaciones de industrias extractivas o de recursos naturales, hay que preguntarle a la población que vive allí si realmente ellos quieren hacer esas actividades productivas y si las hacen en qué condiciones y si realmente eso los va a beneficiar o no. Eso se llama en el derecho internacional el derecho a la consulta. Yo lo que creo es que si se hace, eh, digamos, un comercio más justo entre los países del sur eh, con sus propias empresas, si se promueve la industrialización y la generación de riqueza propia, hay más posibilidades de tener modelos de desarrollo, digamos, que permitan avanzar en, eh, para superar la situación de pobreza. Si nuestros países están condenados a ser eternamente proveedores de materias primas, proveedores de materias primas baratas, eh, estamos condenados a seguir siendo pobres por siempre. Present trade relations between Europe and our region can be illustrated with the economic partnership agreements which negotiations are underway. But when we are negotiating IPAs, we are not negotiating as SADAC. There are different groupings that have been put up in the negotiations. So it has the effect of working against the integration of the region that is by volution of the countries in the region. E impiden que los países del sur actúen como bloque. Y obviamente eso tiene que ver con eh, hacer negociaciones bilaterales en condiciones de mayor debilidad y de mayor asimetría económica y política con los países del sur. It is advantageous for the European countries to come together, negotiate trade agreements as a bloc, have a, a, a common currency, a, the euro. Why, can, why should that arrangement not work for Africa? So in as much as European Union sees the logic of coming together as a regional bloc, This is the same logic that we see ourselves as Africa coming into our own regional blocks with autonomy and sovereignty. The EU is taking the political spaces of our country and our voices are being drowned, and our people are not being heard, the farmers are not being heard. So we need to take back these spaces so that our voices can be heard, and good policies which benefit people and not corporations will be implemented. It's not a question of you thinking what the solution should be. It is thinking along with the people, what are the possible things that can be done. Let's put human interests first and profit second.